Charlotte FC fans have been without their favorite sport for weeks, but now the team is back in the Queen City and with some new faces. We are joined by a face that is not new. We <laughs> haven't seen him in a while, though. Willie P is the play-by-play uh, -play radio announcer for Charlotte FC. And Willie, first of all, it's good to see you, my friend. Welcome mm -hmm. back. Good to see you guys. Well, it's been a long time <laughs> since we've seen our team out there playing, at least with MLS, so it's nice to welcome everyone back. Yeah, it's weird. The three and a half weeks off that they've had can be looked at as an advantage, but I think there's also some concern about whether or not there might be some rust on the guys. They've mm. tried to kind of vary the training a little bit so that they get their rest. I you know the guys played a, uh, a friendly on Saturday morning, according to Dean Smith, against Charlotte Independence. So that at least kind of got the legs a little bit uh, out of that rusty scenario. Yeah. And they've had really a, a typical game week. The one good thing about it is everybody's healthy. There's no injuries. So that's a good thing. Okay, yeah, that's good. That is a good thing. We also have a bunch of new faces mm. joining the team as well, but it's not a really easy matchup as we have the Red Bulls coming in there. They're another playoff team sitting there. So how's this all going to work out, the new faces and tough competition on the pitch? Well, the new face that you might see this weekend for the first time would be Tim Ream mm -hmm. facing his former team, the U.S. International, who played at Fulham for the last 9, 10 years, comes back to America, hadn't played in MLS since 2011. So he's somebody who very much could feature. You won't see either of the other two or three new faces in this matchup because of visa issues, but mm -hmm. uh, they'll at least try to feature in here in the next couple of weeks, maybe the new Central attacking midfielder Pep Biel could be in as soon as next weekend against Atlanta, so that'd be a big boost for Charlotte FC's attack. But I think it really infuses the group a lot, Julian, because when you get new guys in, that puts pressure on the existing players to perform at their best. Well, and here's the good thing about Bank of America Stadium. It doesn't, uh, away teams don't perform as well no. when they come here, which is good. I'm glad it's intimidating. You look at the Red Bulls, they've lost like I think the last five of their away games. Mm -hmm. So even though they beat us earlier in the year, uh, what, what do we need to do tomorrow in order to secure a win as we try to build this playoff, this path to the playoffs. Jason, dictate the terms is what you need to do. Uh, okay. Red Bulls are a team that loves to play with the ball in the air, and Charlotte FC has got to do their best to keep the ball on the ground because they want to play with it. New York Red Bulls want to win aerials. They want to mm -hmm. try to get you in a little bit of a uh, an argy-bargy, as my friend Jessica Charman likes to say. <laughs> a lot of the back and forth. Say it with her accent. Come on. I, I can't do that. I won't do that for you. <laughs> no, argy-bargy. Argy-bargy. <laughs> they, they'll, they'll try to do a little bit of the kind of the rough and tumble stuff and the yeah. dark arts to try and muck the game up a little bit. Uh, Charlotte FC's got to stay disciplined, dictate the terms, and make sure that they get themselves in finishing their chances. Yeah. So speaking of finishing our chances, we really haven't seen much of Sordorsky and Leal Abada on the pitch. I haven't together. seen any of it. So is this a chance to see some added Ooh. firepower there and possibly the, the best offense we've seen all season? So we had a conversation yesterday, Jess and I, with Charlotte FC GM Zoran Cornetta, and he said that Sordorsky and Abada on the pitch together uh -huh. in that friendly Saturday were yeah. very, very good. Ooh, okay. Very, Ooh. very good together. So I was kind of the first opportunity to really see them together on the pitch together. That's going to be something that I really feel like unlocks a lot of that kind of stoppage when you think about the way that Charlotte FC had kind of unfortunately not taken their chances. Those two, combined with Vargas and the addition of Pep Biel in the coming weeks, will really revolutionize this attack. Uh, Willie P, we are currently six in the Eastern standings. What do we have to do beyond winning against New York tomorrow? What do we have to do to to gain all those points to make it to the playoffs. Protect the home field, Jason. you got okay. five of the next nine, five of the final nine are at home, and they're all, I think, winnable matchups. There's not a team that comes in here to Bank of America Stadium that's not in or around where Charlotte FC is in the standings. All the teams ahead of them, you don't play them at home. Everybody oh. is basically chasing you. The only team that is actually above you right now that you play at home is this team on Saturday with New York Red Bulls. Everybody else is either behind them in the standings or chasing them. So it has to come down to protecting your home field. Get your points that you, as much as you can on the road, but you really have to protect home field in these final five home games.